Hey everyone, and welcome to another edition of Griot's Garage YouTube Live. We have an exciting show and a little bit of a surprise uh, with one of our guests today. Uh, Jeff Brown is here with us. So we are going to show off all of the products that we are able to show off today uh, with time permitting, not that uh, <laughs> anything lot nefarious to is, uh, is going on here, but we're gonna show you a ton. We're gonna give away a lot of products. We're excited to have you all here. Um, we're not gonna do a lot of introduction outside of just making you aware of our one and only ongoing sale right now, which is a BOGO sale. So if you buy a gallon of uh, select products, you will get a free 22 ounce of them using the code SMLDT and that is good through the 18th. And then of course, if this is your first time here and you like what you see, please do us the favor of liking this video and subscribing. You can follow us on YouTube or on, uh, <laughs> on YouTube, subscribe please. Facebook and Instagram as well uh, for all of the information, new product launches. And for all these products, some of them aren't gonna be on the market for another month or so. Um, so you can subscribe to their specific product pages at griotsgarage.com to find out exactly when they do go live. That being said, ceramic, uh, ceramic trim restore and our plastic all-in-one are live right now. So what we show you, if it impresses you and you like it and you don't win one, uh, you can buy it right now at griotsgarage.com. So we're going to be doing uh, a specific order of the products for the demonstration. And for each of the products that we're demonstrating and talking about, we're going to give away at least two of each of those specific liquids. And then there are two grand prize winners. So your participation will be rewarded and your specific questions will be rewarded. So uh, I think that's all, unless you guys uh, remember something I didn't. So we can get going. And show yeah, these no. Off. Giveaway heavy. Get in those comments if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, I think we've got a lot to cover. So. So we are going to start off by talking about our super concentrate, super concentrated car wash pods. We're going to move to ceramic liquid wax, ceramic rinseless uh, wash, our ceramic trim restore, plastic all-in-one, foaming glass, the pressure washer accessories, the fragrances, the micro polisher accessories. Uh, and what else? I am leaving something out, but, so your specific questions should be related to the product that we're talking about, and we're gonna start with the pod, so if you have pod questions, ask now as we get going on these awesome products. Yeah, don't forget, if we don't get to your question today, we will be following up with the normal no questions left behind uh, this Friday, 11.17 at 4 p.m., so. And then also our next live, before we forget about that, will be in December, that will be Santa and the Elf. That is going to be 12, Stevie, can you confirm 12, 14? Let's Goodness see. gracious, this is live, guys. 12, 13. Uh, 12, 13, so December 13th, Wednesday again, 4 p.m. Pacific, Santa will be there, he will be generous, so that's not one you wanna miss either. But without further ado, let's get going, let's talk about pods. So, our super concentrated car wash pods. This is uh, what we believe to be kind of a industry first in a lot of ways. Um, it was one of the directives of our general team here at Griot's Garage, start learning about concentrates. Um, and when we started talking about concentrates with the people that we buy, the bulk chemicals that we mix into the finished goods that you guys buy as uh, formulas, um, they suggested, hey, you, you know, if you're going to concentrate, you could also entertain the concept of a pod. And there's many ways we can go, but one of the ways that we thought was the highest value proposition was car wash. So these super concentrated car wash pods came out of collaboration with our chemist uh, and some of our, distribu our distribution partners uh, in the chemical uh, business. And we have essentially taken the concept of a dishwasher or laundry detergent pod and put it into a form that you can use to wash your car. So this is a super versatile pH neutral formula that simplifies some of your wash preparation and also eliminates product waste and ensures that you get the proper dilution for every time you utilize the specific tool or methodology that you like, whether that be hose and bucket or foaming sprayer or foam cannon. So we're just gonna show you the simplicity of these and demonstrate the suds and lubrication um, and kind of talk through the actual uh, timing that is required to have these things dissolve. These are water soluble, just like many other uh, pods that you may be familiar with. 
Um, and our film in particular is very, very uh, soluble. So uh, the one that we have in our pre-production samples is about a 90 second dwell. The one we are moving to is about a 60 to 90 second dwell, uh, so that, or uh, till it's dissolved. So that is something we're pretty excited about. But really, if you've ever washed a, or mixed up car wash in a bucket, um, you probably put a certain amount of water in there. You may or may not measure it, depending on your bucket. And then you're probably gonna just dump car wash solution in. Yeah, the old glug glug method. Yeah, in fact, some of our uh, largest customers prefer the glug glug method uh, because it means they sell more car wash, but it means for you, uh, you're getting less value per wash. And even with a pH neutral soap, uh, excessive concentration can lead to diminished uh, protection on both carnauba waxes and ceramic uh, coatings and sealants. So. The simplification of this means no excess waste at the very least, and then again, pH neutral car wash, it's not gonna attack your protection per se no. by like an alkaline or acidic wash, but uh, too much every time can definitely lead to uh, lessened durability. So, we have an empty bucket, just to let you guys see, absolutely empty. And just gonna toss one of these pods in and fill the bucket up with water. So what we have found is that as we're filling the bucket with water, simply find a corner or peg the pod into the back of it. And this one pod will make up to four gallons of concentrate, um, which is what we picked as kind of an average between a mid-sized SUV and truck. Um, and if you're doing a foaming method beforehand on a larger car, four gallons of wash would be that, you know, same specification as well, but we're really hitting the pot itself. Yeah, focus your water on the pot as you're filling. Now they can dance around the bucket a little bit, but typically if you don't get a dissolve in your initial fill, you're just gonna wanna let it set for about 30 seconds, 30 to 60 seconds post hitting it with water. Wait for that pod to pop and then top off your bucket to mix your suds. Yeah, so we're at about three and a half gallons and I'm watching the air bubble in the pod just come to the top. And as soon as it bursts, I'm gonna agitate and get the suds. Now, I wouldn't wanna stand around here. I could use a, a more vicious stream and pop that pod pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, but we've got plenty <laughs> to talk about and we can see if there's some questions in the few more seconds that we've gotta wait. Mark Blakely asked, uh, does it matter if it's cold or, or warm water? Will it dissolve either way? It will dissolve either way. Warmer water will definitely accelerate uh, uh, the pod dissolving, but not critical uh, to choose one or the other. In particular, uh, when you've got the option, you're filling up a reservoir like a foam cannon at the sink. You could choose hot water uh, for your foam cannon. Uh, but when you're out in the driveway using a hose and a bucket, you're probably not going to have hot water. If you do, you're lucky, um, and you can uh, definitely use hot water, but yeah. not, not pertinent. Yeah, cool. you can also dilute these in a foaming tool like a foam cannon or a foaming sprayer, which we will also show you. Nick's going to go ahead and mix that up. But I'm you're going to want to use two to a foam can or foaming sprayer and one to a bucket with three to four gallons of water. So you have a little bit of variable there depending on whether you're doing the bucket wash or a foaming tool wash. Of course, doing this live, we're, we've done this a million times. And, uh, do thing, Nick. Yeah. Give, her, give her a good... Well, I'm getting, yeah, uh, mix. getting a little thaw. There we go, got it. All right. There you go, now you see the suds, oh, about a minute. A little bit over probably with the initial fill. Okay, there we are. So that is pretty much all we would want to do for a traditional hose and bucket method. And then we'd be ready to wash. Awesome. So one of the things that you'll note, we've got a great scent in these and then the lubrication, the feel relative to a traditional concentrate that will be higher viscosity is gonna be absolutely similar. Yeah, you're gonna give you plenty of suds like you're used to with the normal super concentrated wash. In fact, again, when we talk about the safety of a car wash, uh, we generally tend to equate suds to a, a more of a visual trait and lubrication is one of the things that may actually take away from suds. But it's enough and enough of a soapy hold that 
uh, you will get a safe car wash as your contact wash, whether that be after a foaming process or as simple uh, hose and bucket traditional method. Yeah. So I'll go ahead and rinse this and then we'll hit it with the foam cannon so you guys can see what we're working with there. For time's sake, we pre-diluted or pre-mixed two of the pods in our cannon reservoir. And it's not going to be quite as thick of foam as you're used to with like the Boss foaming system or brilliant finished snow foam, but you do get a nice foam output. I'm still going to give you plenty of cleaning and lubricity to safely get the job done and utilize all the benefits of a foaming wash. Yeah, and uh, Michael Osorio asked, do you recommend a shower stream to uh, fill your bucket? That was absolutely my mistake. I should have you know, been focusing a little more intense of a stream to burst that pod uh, as I fill up my bucket. That would have made it a little easier, uh, a little smoother, but this is a, a live demonstration. Yeah, I didn't, uh, didn't check our, <laughs> uh, our hose pattern. But um, as you can see, there's versatility. Now with any product that has utility across multiple tools, uh, you're generally gonna see you know, probably lesser foam on a, a, a product that can be used in a hose and bucket versus like a snow foam that's gonna be you know, developed for specifically maximum foam and not have enough uh, viscosity or lubrication yeah. for a traditional hose and bucket method. So we're pretty proud of the foam that it can create through a foam cannon. And then again, just the simplicity of one pod in the bucket as you fill your bucket up. Um, just takes out uh, one process that if you don't insist upon a measuring cup, you just want to toss it in, very easy. Um, we had a couple questions of will it be different colors and scents for the car wash? No, but to suggest that we haven't learned enough to potentially apply this technology to a couple other uh, use cases, uh, that's, that's definitely part of the future for sure. Yeah, and the color and fragrance riffs off of our long-standing, super concentrated car wash um, that a lot of you guys have used before, so it does have a similar fragrance to it, and then that bright red color. Um, remember, it's one pod per bucket, three to four gallons of water, two pods to a full reservoir for your foam cannon, or your average foam cannon or foaming tool like our foaming sprayer. And you can see, you know, we've been sitting here talking for uh, at least two to three minutes now, and we still have really nice cling on the surface, so it's going to give you a ton of cling to break down that you know, dirt and con uh, surface contaminant to help you rinse it off before you get into your contact wash or give you plenty of lubricity during your contact wash, depending on your technique. Yeah, and Millie Harbinger mm -hmm. asks, can you show one pot in a foam cannon? Uh, probably not today, but uh, we've definitely tested one pot in a foam yep. cannon. And it's ample foam, in particular, if you're using that as a soaking step uh, or a pre-soak you know, pre or foaming method. Um, but we thought that, hey, if, if we recommend one pod to somebody who's expecting foam like you see with two, it's probably not going to give you the desired result. Yeah. That being said, is it possible to be done and will you get foam that will accomplish the goal of soaking the surface before contact wash? 100%. Yeah, yeah definitely going to get more of that cleaning foam that you're used to with two, and uh, you know, plenty of cleaning ability and lubricity there. So just for time's sake, I'm just gonna rinse from the top down. And then oh. we, we have a question uh, from AR and SoCal, and I think this is an important one, and I think he should win some pods, so one of our first winners. Any risk of the plastic pod cover getting caught in the foam cannon tip? Um, we had seen that question be asked multiple times across social media and we have found that if you rush the uh, dissolving, so if you don't wait a full 90 to uh, 120 seconds in the foam cannon or don't shake it vigorously enough, then yes, that water soluble uh, film can run up into your, uh, your, your drip tube. However, it is water soluble. This isn't like a permanent clog by any means. So really, it's only if you're rushing. Um, and as I mentioned before, the film that we have on the production pods will dissolve even quicker. Um, so we have found it in all of our testing, which has been for nearly a year, that it has never actually clogged a foam cannon. 
unless we've been in an absolute hurry um, and just gone immediately without a thorough shake. So leave it for 90 seconds, if you can, 120 seconds. I usually fill it up, drop it in, screw the top on, go get the rest of my gear ready, and then by the time I come back, it's probably longer than that, give it a good shake, and the pod and solution is ready to go. So the Brilliant Finish Foam Cannon and the uh, Boss Foam Cannon are the same amount of pods. We're trying to apply that to a multitude of foam cannons, uh, like all the way up and down the quality level. If you're using the Boss Foam Cannon, you will not need a metering tip if you drop the pods in. So that is definitely uh, something to be uh, aware of. And then T-Bone Todd asks how many pods come in a bag, 18 pods per bag. And once again, these are not immediately available. We think they're gonna be available around mid-December and you can sign up to find out when they're available at griotsgarage.com. Search super concentrated car wash pods, go to the detail page for that product. And there's a button you can click to sign up for an email as soon as they become available. How many ounces of product per pod? They are approximately 15 grams per pod. So on an ounce basis, I am not exactly certain, but I think it's uh, about three quarters of an ounce. Uh, so very, very high level of concentration. And Ken McCune asks, does it have any gloss enhancement in it and or SiO2? No, not for now. This is just a very, uh, concentrated, lubrication-rich, safe, pH-neutral car wash, which we believe everybody has a place for in their arsenal, um, and again, can add some effectiveness, efficiency, and minimize the waste uh, of your basic car washing process. Okay, yeah. so we turn the truck around because for our next set of demos, we've got a totally neutral surface that we're gonna demonstrate some of our ceramic products on and we know that you guys expect some objectivity relative to the results of our products, in particular the ceramic ones. So we're going to move on pretty quickly here to ceramic liquid wax and while the rest of the questions come in, I'll pick one more winner for the pots. Stevie, you got anything that you found while we're moving along? Um, it's a little chaotic, but I did, there were a couple people that asked about whether they were like kid friendly. Um, I do want to mention, you want to keep these away from your kids just for the chance that they're going to pop it in their mouth because it looks edible. Um, it does have child resistant uh, Ziploc on the package to keep them out of it. Um, it's a safe wash if you have kids helping you wash your car, but definitely don't leave it around. around yeah, I mean, kid. look, unfortunately in the world that we live in, people are eating laundry detergent pods and uh, putting on TikTok to get street cred which is uh, highly irresponsible. Uh, the pods do come in a child resistant bag. Um, they can be safely stored in the garage. If it is completely sealed, uh, you're gonna be okay. Obviously you don't wanna put a wet hand into the pod container um, as you're grabbing one out to go wash your car. That will potentially accelerate um, the, the balance of the pods and dissolve some of them, make a big mess. But in terms of uh, humidity, and heat and thaw, we're, we're through those stability phases. Uh, but just like you went, you know, dumping a glass of water into your laundry or dish detergent pods, you kind of want to avoid that. But child resistant packaging is, is, a, is a feature. And I think one of the other things that we've gotten a lot of compliments about is that this is a lot of car washes in a very small package relative to the equivalent 64 or, or gallon size uh, bottle of car wash. So you can, you can store it pretty easily. You can throw it in the trunk of your car. Um, but yeah, I think kids are drawn to things that look cool and smell good and they're kids, all right? <laughs> so you know what kids do. We have plenty of kids between the few of us and... Uh, I like to think mine are smarter than... Look, I, I, at our garage <laughs> sale last weekend, we had an 11-year-old come up and was fascinated with the pods and I asked him to try and open the bag. He couldn't open the bag. Hey, that's a good so, test. So uh, that, yeah. that was definitely uh, like first person real world, uh, you know... <laughs> experience relative to child resistance. Uh, I think a few of us adults around here had a tough time opening it as well. So yeah, uh, definitely so, child resistance. So Neil White asks, will the car wash pods be sold in stores like AutoZone? These will be in AutoZone. Uh, we still have decisions to be made uh, with our other auto retail partners. So early in the year, uh, you'll see these in your local AutoZone. Um, and I think enthusiasts had asked that as well. 
And uh, Bill Donald says he'd love to see pods for a microfiber and foam pad cleaner. So, for real? Yeah. yeah. That's a great yeah, we'll, idea. We'll, uh, I'm looking for a job. We'll keep an eye on it. I think that might be giveaway worthy. Okay, well, why don't That's we get started with uh, ceramic liquid wax? Jeff, you got the floor, and uh, we will pick one more pod winner, and you get gone. All right. Because we got a lot to cover, guys. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, they let me out of the cage this week, so I'm pretty excited to be here all. Uh, we're going to just uh, get to it. Uh, ceramic liquid wax. It is, without a doubt, the most durable wax that Griot's has ever produced. Uh, I put it on par with any liquid wax on the market. Um, certainly, uh, the PD team here at Griot's has tested virtually every wax I can imagine. Uh, so that's one of the biggest benefits. Uh, a few other things you're gonna find, it, it contains the same technology that we are using in our other ceramic products, the silane and the resin. Uh, you're gonna find that you're gonna get a really brilliant high gloss, deep, deep dark looks on dark colors. Um, and one of the things that I love most about it is that it is abrasive free. And if you look at almost, I'd say most of the car waxes on the market use some form of abrasive in them. Even if they yeah. purport like a non-abrasive formula, they do contain a, a small amount of abrasive. And the reason they do that is for wipe off. It makes it very easy to wipe off. What would be the, the drawback to that? You got any ideas, Nick? Uh, micro marring or well, removing or reducing durability. Those are two key points, but uh, for any of you that have waxed a, a good looking rig like this, uh, you hit the textured trim and that abrasive turns, dries and turns white in the texture and trim. So big benefit, especially if you're working on like a, I don't know, vintage Porsche and you've got black trim against red all over the car and you're trying to detail the, the paint and you, you, know, you come across, no matter how hard you try, you hit that, that black trim. This will, not that we recommend it, it'll actually enhance it. Um, so it's nice for doing detail work. Um, extremely yeah, hydrophobic. So. Instead of the white residue, you get a nice, deeper, darker yeah. appearance to your trim. Yeah, no doubt. I got <laughs> our second winner. It's definitely a regular. Joe Edgar, he asks, how long will the pods last in the bag? Well, you're going to be our, our test dummy, Joe. So you're going to get a bag <laughs> of pods. Be sure to email socialagreosgarage.com. You're our second winner for the pods. And we'll get going on some demos with the ceramic liquid wax. Uh, once again, 18 pods per bag. Uh, and we've, we've got so many questions coming through, especially as we're transitioning to ceramic liquid wax. Our no questions left behind is going to be a long one. Um, for the majority of these products, again, two of them are immediately available. We've got a little graphic in the bottom left side of your screen to let you know when these products are becoming available. If you want to be the first to know, go to griotsgarage.com, search the specific product name, on that web page, there will be a link to sign up for an email when the products are in stock and ready to ship from griotsgarage.com. And as we mentioned before, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram to find out when these products go live. Um, and right now we have a BOGO sale that you buy a gallon, uh, you get a 22 ounce free. So just letting you all know as we continue to move through what is going to be a frantic and very well viewed uh, event based upon the activity here. So. Uh, Matt will put that code up for us, and Jeff, you better get to waxing, brother. I'm on it. Uh, so we're just going to butter this up quick. Uh, red foam waxing pad. I'm going to run this around speed two. Uh, once you get that pad primed up, you won't certainly need that much. This product's very efficient as far as a little bit goes a long ways. Yeah, easy to use by <laughs> hand or with a random orbital, of course. Yeah. To clear up the view for you guys. So I'm just, just for quickie, we're going to just do this area here. And then later we're going to demonstrate a, this, a new product as well. And then we're going to leave this panel untreated. It's this whole side of the truck's been polished. So there's virtually no wax protection whatsoever. So it's going to do this quick. Yeah. So again, like Jeff just mentioned, it has been polished. Um, decontamination was done prior to that. Just like with any liquid wax, you're going to want to decontaminate the surface prior to applying your wax for best results, not only an even, you know, nice consistent finish, but also maximum durability. And we also used our awesome surface prep cleanser, post decontamination, uh, final, you know, or post polishing, excuse me, uh, as the final wipe down prior to application of the ceramic liquid wax. And with wax application by machine, what speed we're using, Jeff, just so everybody knows? 
Okay. Yeah. My bad. Three. Two to three. Um, yeah. So I'll just, I purposely apply that to the trim. Again, I wouldn't, you know, best practice, obviously avoid that, but just to demonstrate that benefit. Um, the unique thing about this formula uh, is the wipe off uh, application. And what you're going to do is you're going to allow this to sit for 10 minutes. Uh, and most people, I mean, if you're hustling, you can do a car in 15, but I do like half the car. Um, and then we'll do the whole car and then proceed by the time you get around that the whole car, you can go back and start wiping off half. Yeah, um, depending on how fast you are. Don't do too much, you know, if you're not going to be able to wipe it off within 10 minutes. Let me just, uh, you're on camera, right? Yeah. Okay, sweet. Um, so what's unique about it is the wipe off. You're not going to use your traditional dry wipe off method. You're going to use a plush microfiber. You're going to soak it in water and you're going to wring it just, uh, just slightly to where it's damp. Um, it's not going to be soaking wet or dripping. And after 10 minute cure time, we're going to do an initial pass with the wet, wet towel and we're going to flash it with a dry towel. It is very, very fast, very efficient. Uh, and that is going to accelerate the wipe off process and help to set that uh, curing method or curing process uh, with the wax and the polymers. Yeah. So we are actually going to do a countdown for 10 minutes of cure. Yep, yep. so right. we applied it 427, so Steve's we're going to wipe it us. off right around 437. While we're waiting for that setup, we're going to show you our ceramic rinseless wash. So another awesome addition to the ceramic family. You know, a lot of you that frequently view the lives have been asking for this product uh, for quite some time now. Uh, so we're really stoked to bring this one to the market. Great, super simple way to not only wash your vehicle, but get that ceramic protection down. Before you go, we have yep. to pick some winners. So I saw oh, yeah. a couple yeah. people up in the comments, if you could scroll up. Um, we had one gentleman who has been waiting for an, a true abrasive free protection element for his cars. Stevie, you can find them in the comments, uh, but that, is the product for him. So he is going to win ceramic liquid wax. Uh, he'll be the first winner. Um, awesome. Yeah, right there, Scott Dayhoff uh, is going to be yeah. the first uh, winner. That's definitely a name I recognize from before. Uh, and then Rachel uh, Parker, who I, I, I know very well, will ceramic liquid wax work on surfaces other than paint, Jeff and Sam? Uh, I mean, you certainly could use it on like Plastic or taillights, uh, headlights, yeah, it wouldn't, headlights, wouldn't it be a, a negative. Um, rear view mirrors. Um, yeah, piano, probably wouldn't use black. it on glass. No, so, yeah, the piano any, black trim would be good. Any yeah. glossy plastic yeah. and then all your painted surfaces uh, will work well on you know, chrome or plastic chrome as well. Yeah, and one other, uh, we're, we're getting a few more pod questions. Uh, create a bath bomb-like soap product. So the powdered <laughs> pod concept, actually, we, we did check that out. Can be, uh, you're going to want to avoid that. Uh, it, it is definitely not working quite as well as a liquid uh, product. And, and quite frankly, for us, concentrating our liquid uh, is much more effective from a long-term development perspective and manufacturing perspective. And uh, the competitive products, when we were going to different manufacturers that could convert uh, our concentrates into pod forms, uh, that's all they do. And yeah. so they know the difference between a powdered uh, product and a liquid one. And they said, hey, we're leaving powders behind and we're going all liquid. So I don't think it would be as effective as uh, you may suggest. There might be other use cases uh, where that does apply. Uh, we're going to stay away from it. Yeah, not sure. a bad idea, but your car wash is slightly different than, you know, what you're putting in your bath. Yeah, you, you don't want that to not dissolve properly and then pick up some of the powder and abrade your paint with that. Yeah. So I would definitely uh, suggest that that's not going to be the best use case for what we're doing. All right, guys, sorry, back to the right, No worries, no worries. Can't, we can't leave those giveaway winners behind. Yeah. <laughs> one, one thing I wanted to point out, the traditional way to test if a wax is ready to wipe off is just to run your finger gently through it, and if it wipes clear, it's going to be ready to roll. This, this is not going to work that way, so again, just stick to that 10-minute cure, and then uh, your wipe off process, which we'll show you in a few. Yep. Yeah, while that is setting up, we'll go ahead and use some of our ceramic rinseless here. So again, similar to a traditional rinseless wash, um, you're going to dilute it in a bucket, one ounce per gallon. We've got some pre-measured here for our wash bucket. So we got four gallons of water in here, four ounces of ceramic rinseless wash. Going to dump that in the water. 
Of course, you can put your rinseless concentrate in first and then fill your bucket. Uh, we just wanted to save time during the live, so we've got the water already in here. Add the ceramic rinseless and then just mix her up a little bit with your wash tool. We're just using one of our plush edgeless microfiber towels for our wash tool. As with any rinseless wash, you want to dunk your tool. I'm going to show oh, it to you. All right, you, yeah. you uh, just if you can get a shot, there's okay. there's a little bit of sudsing, but you know, much like we kind of purported with our other uh, with ceramic washing coat, um, a a ceramic uh, washing product that creates a ton of foam is contradictory to a protective package, and so yeah. you will see some suds, in particular if you drop the um, ceramic rinseless in and agitate with or fill your bucket with water as You'll the get secondary step. A quick burst and then yeah. it'll die off. It will die down very quickly. Uh, this is lubricant, uh, not so much soap, surfactant, foam. Yeah, right? and, that, and that's common with really any rinseless wash, you know, even a non protective rinseless. Typically, there's some polymers in there to add lubricity. Um, you're, you're never going to get a lot of foam from a rinseless, so you should. You know, if you're a rinseless user, you should be relatively used to that. Uh, but again, using the plush edges microfiber, dunk it in the solution and wring it out to the point where it's not you know, dripping wet. And then you would just wash the surface as normal. Of course, this surface was already cleaned. You know, we, we prepped it to make sure it was completely bare prior to this. Um, however, I'm going to show you the normal technique for a rinseless anyways. So you would just, you know, from top down, just as you would with a quick detail spray, Towel folded in half twice. I'm going to turn the towel as I go. Now move through those towel surfaces so you're not preventing any uh, wash and do scratches during the rinseless process. Work your way from the top down. I guess I'll cover a little bit more of the bed here just to give you guys more of a wow when it comes to the protection. And they, one of the things that I've experienced in using this product that is uh, similar to like a wash bucket method on a, on a ceramic washing coat is the break is yeah. immediate. Yep. Uh, you get push and the water starts kind of creating its own pattern. Uh, so you know that there's a reaction happening immediately. Yeah, that's that ceramic component. You can see over here where I just applied, it's still a flat sheet. This area that's had some dwell time is broken up as Nick just mentioned. And we can tell it's starting to protect and bond to the surface. So. You do want to come in and dry this one up quickly. Um, a lot of rinseless products like our ceramic, or excuse me, our rinseless wash and wax, not ceramic. Um, it's pretty forgiving. It gives you a lot of dry time. This one you're going to want to do smaller sections. Don't let it dry on the finish prior, um, just so that you don't experience any issues with residue at all. I'm using one of our PFM towels for drying. You always want to use you know, the two towel method when you're doing a rinseless. Use one towel for your wash, obviously, and then the PFM is a great towel to follow up with for your drying process. At that point, you've removed all the grit and contaminant, so you can just get after it, get it nice and dry. Okay, so we've so, had a couple questions about this, and I want to talk to both of you guys about this. Uh, stepping back a little bit to ceramic liquid wax durability, we never make specific claims about time on durability because of the variability of conditions, how people wash their cars, what types of soap they wash them with. Um, but one of the things, I mean, we are certain it is our most durable liquid wax and it is on par, if not beyond ceramic three-in-one uh, sprayable <laughs> liquid wax or sprayable wax. So uh, we're gonna, Stand on, it's our most durable, and if you've been impressed by ceramic 3-in-1's uh, durability, you're going to be impressed with this. Likewise, you can supplement and extend the life of any of your base coat with all of the products that are in our ceramic family, including ceramic rinseless wash, uh, which is a great, you know, tough condition uh, washing process that can bolster your base coat uh, and, and extend the life of it. Uh, while still getting a safe clean every time. So uh, those are two questions I've seen come up a couple times. Um, and then one other one, guys, we don't have any uh, ancillary dilution ratios or pre-soaking uh, that we recommend yeah, with this product. Because of the durability in that, in that pack protection package, we, you want to control where it's going and, and yeah. 
you, uh, you want to get it on and, and get it off. It's a very, uh, very forgiving product if you apply it you know, in that regard. Uh, one thing I wanted to note, you guys, like just remember, um, it, it's not just going to protect the paint. Virtually any surface that it comes in contact with on the vehicle, it's going to do offer that hydrophobic protection. Um, so, yeah, and paint, glass, foam, I, I think that's it. the biggest point. And then the other reason you wouldn't pre-soak with it is because of the reactivity of the polymer package yeah. yep. in the SR2. I mean, if you start seeing it uh, dry up, you're 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 not going to be happy. So yeah, you definitely don't want to pre-soak a extremely soiled car, which if you've ever done like a high pressure rinse on a car that's come down from a mountain pass, you're seeing it dry up as well. Yeah. I, yeah. I would not be, you know, pre-soaking a very dirty car with a highly reactive formula like we have. No. Does that limit its utility with regards to how dirty the car is? Yes. But does it compromise or does it compensate with the incredible protection that it offers, which is Ridiculous. quite frankly in the ceramic rinseless category, unmatched. Yeah, yes. without it, very much so. And mm -hmm. if you have a heavily soiled surface, you really should be, you know, pre-rinsing that ideally anyways, go through your local, you know, do it yourself car wash, give it a quick rinse, pull it home into the dry, into the garage and use yeah. your, your rinseless wash. But I think we're about ready to wipe off yeah. that ceramic liquid wax. Yeah, and I think we've got it. We, we owe some, uh, some people some products because I've got one person who uh, he literally just said, Charles Long, gonna love this during Phoenix summers. Well, why don't you try it during a Phoenix winter? Yeah. Uh, Charles, you have one ceramic uh, rinseless wax or rinseless wash, <laughs> your first winter there. Um, we're drying the residue of ceramic rinseless gum up the towel. Much like most of our products that you are wiping off, uh, we're not misleading you relative to the ceramic protection that each of them contain. It is best to wash them as soon as possible it, while they are still wet. Um, otherwise, yes, over time you will see diminished uh, performance from your microfiber. Granted, that can be restored pretty well with our uh, microfiber foam and pad cleaner. Yeah, we have a reel about refreshing towels that have lost their absorbency yeah. um, using a stronger dilution of our microfiber foam pack cleaner. So no check doubt. that out. So again, just to, uh, for those of you that just came on, we got a plush towel that's been soaked in water. We've wrung it out. Uh, with this, I'm gonna be, I've got eight clean sides, the way I've got the towel quartered, uh, folded in half. So you wanna frequently rotate your, your towels as you're working around, again, to kind of uh, address what Nick, what you guys had commented on as far as loading up. But very simple, just keep your hand perpendicular to your wipe. A lot of people will wipe this way and you'll get finger marks. Like you can see uneven application. So wipe perpendicular and flash that with a plush towel. And it's, it's really quite effortless. Yeah. Um, so towel yeah. control makes wax wipe off and polish residue wipe off much easier. So like Jeff said, Towel full and a half twice, you know, perpendicular to how you applied. Hit it with that damp towel first and then come in with your dry microfiber and buff the surface. All right, Stevie, I've got our second ceramic rinseless winner, Furio Lupin. Email social at griotsgarage.com. I need one of those ceramic rinseless wash to make my life easier. Good, there you go. Yes. <laughs> uh, you're a winner. It's that simple, guys. Wish granted. Uh, and uh, Tini, Tony DiPartolo asked, would this replace ceramic speed shine for in-between washes? If your car is uh, considerably more soiled than you feel comfortable using a quick detailer like ceramic speed shine on, yes, rinseless washing is definitely safer than a waterless or quick detail wipe down of your car. We definitely know that, have always coached that. So I would definitely recommend it uh, if your car only has light dusting pollen, sure, quick detailer is the, the name of the game, but uh, rinseless is always going to be safer every time you're, you're touching your car. Yep. Yeah, money. Right, We're guys? Gonna, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> 100%. Well, you got the job, Nick. You got the now job. Now all points. All right. Giving all you guys lots of attention with these giveaways. Yeah. So. Keep asking the great questions, guys. Sponge worthy. Awesome. Can you use a sponge with ceramic uh, no, rinseless wash? No, never use sponges. Yeah. Sponges, you lose the safety of the nap of a towel when you're using yeah. a sponge. So we, I mean, we'd we really recommend, recommend a, a plush washing tool. Yeah, yeah. There's, I mean, you could yeah. use like our microfiber washcloths, the ultra plush towels, the standard plush towels, even a you know a, a standard like chenille wash pad is going to be better than a sponge. 
just back to sponges, at the end of the day, they're, they're, they're cells. And those cells will certainly trap and pull dirt away from the surface, but they also continue to carry that dirt across the surface. So you will incur wash and do scratches from that, that sponge. So just again, this is uh, ceramic liquid wax, 10 minute cure. Uh, you know, certainly, ideally, we wanna let this uh, sit up to 24 hours to optimize that protection package. But what we're doing right here is just to demonstrate to you the hydrophobic properties, um, that intense water beating that's on par with, I mean, pretty close to some of the, uh, some of the more powerful stuff that's out there. This yeah. panel is untreated, so there is nothing here. You should see, hopefully we can capture it on camera, you could see water just kind of plating over the surface. Hydrophilic, this is gonna be hydrophobic. And again, uh, the bed is gonna be ceramic rinseless. And we're just gonna kind of work our way across the panel to show you guys uh, what we got. Yeah, you can even hit that front door because that's bare too. So. True, true. So we'll, I don't know what you got there, Matt, but just, um, that's, not, that's not bare. So just take a look at that beading. Pretty insane. You see here where the water just sheets. Um, I That'll forgot you would hit the front door. Didn't yeah. You? That'll certainly, uh, the hydrophobic property, the beading, those tall contact angle high beads are going to improve over time. So this is just a, just a quick uh, check to kind of show you what we got. Again, this was a, sorry, this was a, a bare panel. We've just simply treated it with ceramic rinseless wash. That is the only protection that is on this panel. So take a look at the beading we've got here. So if you if you got a car that maybe you just don't want to spend a lot of time on, you want, but you want to put some good protection down, that's about yeah. one of the easiest ways to, to get that, that ceramic. Down. Or you already have a ceramic base, you want to upkeep it. Yeah. The rinseless wash <clears throat> is an awesome way to do so. Great addition to your current regimen of ceramic speed shine and or ceramic wash and coat as maintenance products or your ceramic three-in-one, and now the new ceramic liquid wax. Yeah, so we've had a lot of questions about layering, uh, layering liquid wax on top of all-in-one, which definitely would be acceptable. Um, even though, again, I'd say liquid wax is the base coat you want. So if you're trying to get a correction step and follow with a different protection package, you're probably gonna wanna use like a perfecting cream or correcting cream first. So if you're trying to do it all in one step, uh, just, just keep it with all in one and you can, you can top it with whatever you want. Um, but in general, all of our ceramic family is going to serve itself. The only thing we would not recommend is if you're trying to layer on top of a abrasive free uh, top coat such as um, ceramic 3-in-1 wax or ceramic liquid wax, don't use ceramic all in one. Don't introduce the abrasive and, and cut off some of your base protection. Yeah. Uh, or, just do it in sequence and notice or know that your abrasive step should happen first. Or apply like on top of a natural wax that's gonna be limited yeah. relative to, to the we, we, We've talked you guys ear off about layering. The top layer is gonna reflect um, you know, the water characteristics of that particular product. If you're putting carnauba on top of ceramic, you're gonna mask the hydrophobicity of the ceramic. Uh, and if you put ceramic on top of carnauba, you're gonna get the durability of carnauba. So, yeah. you know, pick your poison and, and go the route you want, but we've, we've coached that a lot. Thank All right, you, is ceramic rinseless wash safe on matte paint? Uh, so far in my experience, yes, yeah. Um, yeah. it is quite effective on that. And then once again, as Jeff mentioned, uh, you've got glass, you've got exterior plastics, you've got your wheels that it can be used on as well. For sure. Super slick too. Yeah, Tons it's of pretty crazy. All right, Stevie, sorry yes. to cut you off. No, you're good. I was just going to say Mike Giomi asked, um, sorry, lost it. Uh, do you need to use more than one pad to treat the entire surface with ceramic liquid wax or would it be okay since the wax building up in the pad wouldn't necessarily hurt? I think based upon the two questions from Mike Giomi, Mike Giomi's went in some ceramic liquid wax as well. 
Um, I don't know if we've given away two, or I'm not even keeping That's the second. anymore. We're, we're making up the rules. Go Mike Giomi, you are the uh, winner of some ceramic liquid wax, and you want to take his questions, which are... I can't read it. I can't oh, read. It's, it's a single pad to apply it around the entire car, and what's the benefit of hand versus machine application? Yeah. Uh, I'd, I'd say that the this machine application, you're going to get a more even application of that polymeric protection package, so it's, uh, it's going to warm it up a little bit. Uh, so you're gonna, I'd suggest you get a more consistent application versus, uh, and it's obviously less fatigue. I think but, that's the biggest thing. Like yeah, by the time you start work. waxing your car by hand versus the time you end it by hand, yeah. you're gonna be a lot thinner and more even where you start versus where you end. So fatigue is a big factor. But without dragging all that abrasive, like when we're talking with a lot of waxes, like microscopic amount, it's, it, uh, we didn't demonstrate it, but it just it just glides on like butter. So it's, it's pretty it's smooth. Very 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 easy to apply. But yeah, um, yeah I mean we we'll use uh, our wax applicator pad, uh, and uh, it it's certainly a, a an easy way to apply it if you're just looking to have total complete control over your application. Um, gosh, I don't know. I can't think of. A, or if you're one, still not embracing machine use, I yeah. mean you're not going to get a bad result. Not uh, at all. Not uh, just you know, use the product sparingly because a little goes a long way. And as you can't, you know, spin your hand as fast as a orbital will, you you just gotta try and spread it on thinly and evenly. Yeah, I think in most circumstances, as you already mentioned, one pad's gonna be. Oh yeah, good that, to was, go that for was the, the full question. Vehicle. Yeah. So, yeah, you don't need to swap pads like no. when you're polishing because no. you're not working it as hard. You're just floating yeah. it over the surface and getting that wax laid down. So. One thing I would recommend, and, and it's just one of the things that we've experienced with the ceramic uh, waxes, they're very durable. And when you load up your pad, uh, I will say as good as microfiber and foam pad cleaner is, even that is gonna be, it's gonna struggle a little bit with completely re releasing that um, packet, that protection package. So I would just dedicate one pad specifically to the application of ceramic liquid wax and that'll That'll keep you on the right track. Yeah, it's a great yeah. point. All right, we're gonna move on to our next product. And while we're doing that, we are going to uh, answer the balance of these questions that are pretty quick. Um, so the next product we're gonna show off, guys, is Ceramic Trim Restorer. So uh, Jeff, you're up again, brother. And uh, <laughs> while you're, while you're getting to We're a little work, behind, we gotta uh, move. All right, we got, all right. Yeah, we got a couple questions. Uh, so get going okay. um, and we'll, we'll answer those questions as soon as you start moving. So the technology in this is, is rooted in some of the development we did in, with the ceramic tire dressing that some of you may have in your garage already, the 22 ounce and gallon uh, ceramic tire. Um, again, SiO2, silane, uh, some very unique polymers. Uh, biggest benefit, extremely durable. Uh, I'd put it on, on par with any, any like traditional trim restore and then some. Um, it's going to do an exceptional job of restoring color. Uh, this is an example of a wonderful, near and dear to my heart, Mark II <laughs> Volkswagen trim piece. You can see this probably has never been tended to in its entire life. Um, and then we've got the uh, before and after here. Uh, this was simply applied earlier with a blue foam applicator. And you can see the sharp contrast. Try and get that think, up. Yeah, you can give it up closer allocate. there. I've never seen someone get so emotional about a trim piece either. I was going to cut this in half. And huh. This is one. I thought one sorry, it was going to fire me. Spike your audio. <laughs> okay, we're going to move back, and uh, Matt's going to get a close up there. Yeah. All right, guys, we're trying to. Uh, you know, Jeff's getting really passionate. Mark II and anything GTI. You, you probably <laughs> have heard this before, but yeah, that that looks a little better, right? Yeah, that's right. This is yeah, one of the junk or the, the junk trim pieces that didn't make it onto Griot's Motors yeah, uh, Mark II GTI that yeah. we showed at SEMA. So yeah, yeah you can take it cars. home, Jeff, if you want, I, but we're using it for it. testing. You never know when one of these will pop off, but <laughs> biggest thing with this too is it's dry to the touch. So a lot of the polymeric, you know, maybe some of the silicone different emulsions that are out there, you put it on, they look good, but they're queen for a day, you hit it, uh, rainstorm the water, you're going to see dressing running down the, the paint. This is going to essentially cure on the surface, dry to the touch, extremely hydrophobic, water resistant, UVA, UVB sunscreen protection. Uh, so it's an outstanding package pr product. Um, trim uh, rubber seal door seals works fantastic on that under under hood components. Uh, you can use the Target tire dressing applicator, my baby, 
or the blue, blue foam applicator. Um, as far as, uh, we'll do a little demo here. Um, it's kind of a, in fact, if you went to SEMA, we did give away a, a handful of these. Quite, um, quite a few thousand, actually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think, so, think 5,000, yeah. exact. <laughs> really easy product to work with. As you apply it, you know, if, if you don't get it perfectly even or streak-free in your first pass, has a self-leveling agent in it that after you know five to ten minutes, any high spots or streaks are going to level out. Oh, yeah. I think the thing that I was most impressed with too is is the self-leveling, yeah. uh, the versatility of surfaces. And then when we started going and trying it out on interior surfaces, I mean, if you watch the video of this product, you know, we're working on my grandpa's, you know, nearly forty-year-old. Vanagon now, and the transformation of that dash is yeah. phenomenal. And this isn't like some sticky silicone masking agent, right? Sure. This is yeah. this is something that's been sticking around um, uh, and has some great UV resilience. I mean, we were driving it around all summer, and the, the color's not changing. The sheen isn't obnoxious. There's not a lot of off-gassing. So I've been very impressed with that. The, um, the, the Nerf tubes are uh, steps, runners, like. There's a lot of slickery, uh, for lack of a better way of saying it, <laughs> products that are out there that'll you'll do a double gainer. This is uh, it's going to dry, to, you know, non non. Uh, slippery. Not the good kind of double gainer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, so, and then and then the ease of wipe off when you do kind of even, yeah. you know, no requirement for taping uh, because you can simply uh, wipe it off pretty quickly. Yeah, it's not a dye. You can use it on any trim any color. color yeah. Comes uh, off of paint and glass very easy. Some, some really, this in fact was done with one application, uh, but in some cases, if it's yeah. really thirsty and really neglected, uh, you may have to hit it with a couple applications to get that full color restoration. I think, Matt, can um, you cut in on, on Jeff's camera again? Well, just go to Jeff's up, cam, yeah, and it was, it was showing it really good there. Uh, AR and Socal uh, asked what kind it. of prep. Um, you know, a good thorough cleaning, uh, basic car wash. If you recently applied something that you presumed was ceramic and is disappointing you, you might want to cut whatever remains of that off with rubber prep or an alkaline Definitely. cleaner. Um, for interior application, which again, we found to be a great use of this, um, I would definitely do interior cleaner at a bare minimum. Uh, that's, that's generally yeah, what we're yeah. doing for application my Bronco. You know, my kids are kick in the back of my seats like the little uh, minions that they are. And, uh, you know, just basic dressings weren't really resolving it versus the leveling that was happening with some of those kind of whitish scuffs uh, with this product. Pretty impressed yeah. with it. So this is available now. Uh, we've got a couple people that we've got to give this away to. So let's uh, take a look at some of the questions. And I, we did talk about tires, right? So no, it is uh, certainly applicable on tires. Uh, you're going to get uh, similar protection in terms of durability as a ceramic tire dressing if you're currently using that. Uh, in this case, that tire was slightly wet, uh, so you'll experience that. I mean, you'll you'll actually find it'll go on fine even with a little bit of water, um, and it, it almost just like penetrates through that water and leaves a nice uniform, rich black look, not uh, not too shiny. Um, Nick, of course, appreciates that. He's not yes. into the, the bling. I'm satin, you know, yeah. I like a the little bit guy. of uh, light to catch it, but definitely not like let everybody down the block know or blind yeah. them. Type it's a, of, uh, it's type a great finish. finish. I mean, like you said, Jeff, similar in you know, durability and appearance, probably slightly dur more durable than our ceramic tire dressing, but going to be a very similar appearance. I mean, it's a really clean, subdued look. Um, but also gives you that dress tire without, you know, being too glossy or having any exposure to sling or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, and just for people that have used our ceramic tire dressing, obviously kind of the spray, uh, sprayable application is going to, you know, spread a little easier on a tire. I would suggest that this finish is more subdued than the ceramic tire dressing, which is not on the glossy side of finishes yeah. anyway. But a gel applied tire dressing is going to involve more work. So if you got super knobby hey, tires, uh, it's a labor of love. Not with the Target tire dressing you, applicator. I've had 35 right mud here. terrains on my, uh, my Bronco. <laughs> I worked pretty damn hard on those, but, but uh, I also haven't had to dress them in like a month. So that's a yeah. pretty good benefit. 
And then we did have uh, somebody ask if it's safe on floor mats. I don't ever recommend yeah. dressing floor mats. I just don't no. see the benefit of that. I mean, I'd, I'd rather have dull floor mats than have my family like hit the back of a school bus, right? Well, that's and it, you don't wanna go to, you know, slam on your brakes and your foot slips and yeah. It's just it's, dressing yeah. on floor mats is like tire dressing on motorcycles. Yeah, do what you want. Don't, don't call your attorney and blame Griot's Garage because- yeah. uh, Buy some wheel tire mat cleaner and just keep them Crispy clean. It's yeah. a, the most important part is that you know your drive, your pedals, your clutch, your brake. You know you want to keep those completely dry. Yeah. Rubber prep is great for that. But uh, so that's ceramic trim. Yeah, and and it, this is not. Uh, Frank M asks, and I think Frank M probably has to win this product because uh, he will he will prove to be an advocate. Is this something you have to apply every car wash? Absolutely not. No. Uh, anything that is silicone based that is on the market. Uh, that does not purport ceramic properties is one of those every car wash type of products. This is absolutely not that. Uh, we had another pr person ask, is it safe in the interior on the, on the dash? I have used it effectively on a brand new dash and a 40 year old dash without negatives. We always suggest testing an inconspicuous area first. Plastics and vinyls are made very different way. I don't know what you've put on before it, uh, so I would always check an inconspicuous uh, spot. Uh, and then there was one more question uh, that I did not see. Uh, enthusiast comment. He said, my kid just got big enough to kick my back seat. Okay, enthusiast. <laughs> All right, let's give it to him. He, I mean, we can you relate will, to that You one. will lose your mind because I, I think both uh, one of our, uh, our sales manager, Brandon, and I were kind of empathizing around the same thing. These black plastic uh, rear seat backs yeah. just totally kicked to hell. Uh, so enthusiast, uh, you are going to win the second bottle of ceramic uh, trim restorer. So be sure to email us at socialgrillsgarage.com if we called out your screen name. Uh, this video does live on in perpetuity, so we're gonna know if you're uh, misleading us and Stevie's gonna karate chop you via email if you're trying to lie to us. Um, just to remind you, we do have a great sale going on for all of these products. We've been putting some uh, information in the bottom third of this screen relative to their launch date. Most of the liquids, uh, with the exception of plastic all-in-one and ceramic trim restore, which are out right now, will be debuting in the next month or two months. We are in full production mode, uh, so we're hoping to beat, you know, end of the year, but uh, pretty much December, late December, early 2024 for all of them. You can sign up at griotsgarage.com on the specific product page to be notified via email when the product comes in stock if you have your eye on something specific. So that's all I got. Let's go to the next one, boys. Have we mentioned Cheers. the BOGO code yet? We have, yeah. Okay. Uh, it is a BOGO that's going on right now. So buy a gallon, get a 22 ah, or for free. Um, that is ahead of something we haven't mentioned at all. Yeah. Oh, man. Thanksgiving is next week. Black Friday. Which, uh, like, <laughs> it's I mean, insane. I, 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 mean, yeah. I don't do a lot except for dishes at my house, so like, I don't have a <laughs> lot. I, I bring some wine, I bring some whiskey, you know, I'm kind of like the, you know, the booze Sherpa. Um, and then I'm a good dishwasher, <laughs> for a great sure. Title. But Black Friday and Cyber Monday, we will be having sales on both of those days, so it is an even better time to sign up for our emails or follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We will have sales. On both of those, now, would you call them annual holidays now? Like, I mean, pretty much, yeah. yeah I, I think some people probably celebrate Black Friday more than they do I hope you guys stay at your home and <laughs> get some sleep thing. after Thanksgiving as opposed to like lining up in a mall. I don't know if people go to malls anymore, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, I know, I know I prefer the online variation of Christmas shopping. Yeah. Uh, it's just me, avoid the crowds. <laughs> Yeah, so again, uh, we've got a ton of activity. Thank you uh, very much uh, for all your guys' participation. Um, Jim is asking, applying it to the dash, would you have to be careful of sun reflection? It, this is not a high no, intensity no. yeah. shine by any means. I, I've driven many, many miles in both the cars I've applied it to. I've, I've not had that issue, so I, I would be surprised if you did. Yeah, and in my experience, a lot of surfaces on the interior just makes them look new. It's not going to give you like that has dressing on. Yeah, yeah. I, I would recommend you go watch the video, and if you see uh, the time lapse of the Volkswagen Vanagon, uh, you'll you'll see this is not like 
oh my gosh, this is a brand new dash. This is a very handsome OEM looking dash without yeah. the like, I don't know, look that somebody has modified it. This yeah. is just like yeah. exactly how it came out of, uh, of Westphalia. It doesn't Germany. look right. like it was slathered with a, an inferior interior. No, this is not a, this is not a silicone based wipe finish. Nick, sure. there, one question I, I saw was, uh, you know, does it, do the tires attract dust or does the dirt adhere to those surfaces? Um, and you'll find that ceram the ceramic, both the tire dressing and the trim restore, uh, again, dry to kind of a dry film. And you could literally have um, soil, road grime, which is comprised of mostly like oil and gear fluid, transmission fluid. Uh, you can just take like a pressure washer and blast that off and you'll actually see water just exploding and beating off of the surface and, and it's, it's clean. It looks, it looks like you just put the trim on, so the trim dressing on, so it's... Yeah. I think that was my, that was my aha moment with ceramic tire dressing was going down to San Francisco and back driving in the dusty, you know, Laguna Seca bowl uh, yeah. for that whole weekend, driving 800 miles back home cleaning my wheels off and rinsing my tires off. So yeah, it's a yeah. pretty phenomenal feeling uh, when you don't have to clean your tires every time uh, you clean your car. Well, you guys have heard me say this a lot. You're probably like, everything is this guy's favorite. But that one, <laughs> out of all the new products. Hey, there are You are such definitely. a corporate stooge. <laughs> a lot of definitely a big favorite. A lot yeah. of so sleep, easy. sleepless nights, blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. yeah. You know? uh, and all, Alan Friedlander asked, would well, you use it on a new car? Uh, you know, if you watch the video for Ceramic Trimmer Store, a lot of the newer trim is from the 2022 Bronco, which even in the year and a half that I've had it, has definitely seen some fading and, yeah. and looks better after the application. And you know, that is definitely a, a use case to, hey, my new trim, my new seals, I want them to look good as long as possible, stave off UV degradation, great. Uh, use it for that as well. Yeah, I mean, we had a beautiful long summer. You had the top off that bad boy for much of that and yeah. all that Yeah, got UV caught in the exposure. rain a couple times and had to use our, you know, one of our new products to chase out the, the mold smell. Yeah, uh, and then <laughs> found some French fries too. So, yeah. <laughs> but a great product on convertibles or vehicles where that interior is getting heavily exposed to UV can help protect against that too. Yeah. How about that plastic on one? Yeah, yeah, we gotta move. We're yeah. on to the next one. <laughs> We're gonna keep moving, y'all. We got uh, we got so much to to cover. We're gonna try and give you as uh, as much as we can. Plastic on one. Yeah. So this is another awesome new product. I won't say it's my favorite because I do really like Trim Restore. But it is a phenomenal formula. Being an all-in-one, you're going to get a lot of value and benefit out of this. It is going to not only polish, but also protect any hard, glossy plastic surface. So this isn't meant for textured black plastic or bare rubber like Ceramic Trim Restore is. This one is going to be meant for surfaces like headlights, taillights, uh, piano black B-pillars, piano black interior trim. You know, instrument or gauge clusters where you have a clear plastic cover. Um, in the video, you'll see it used on a motorcycle windscreen, um, soft convertible top windows or windows, you know, soft windows on a Jeep or Bronco, uh, vehicles like that. Really any clear glossy plastic or, you know, colored glossy plastic. It can be used on pigmented plastics on, you know, side-by-sides, ATVs, dirt bikes. John Deere tractors. Yeah, all sorts of stuff. So hey, it's, it works. It, it does work, yeah. Tons That's of true. utility in this product. Um, we formulated it to be used by hand or machine. So I'm going to do a demo on this oxidized headlight by hand. It's a great way to restore a headlight that's not so far gone that you need to use our, uh, like, severe headlight restoration kit, um, but will bring back and provide, you know, add a lot of life you want to get a, a lot shot of, of the before just because we're to, for some yes, reason, uh, definitely. or just like give, uh, give Matt a little, little angle here. of that. There you go. Yeah, so you can see, so this side was done with a headlight restoration kit, so it's pretty, uh, pretty clear there. But, oh, let me go back here. This side is still severely oxidized, so. Doesn't look that bad on camera, surprisingly enough. It we, looks pretty obvious. We did a pre-test uh, in this corner, so is you can see up. there. <laughs> um, that one is is clear, but I'll show you by hand. You know, buttered the pad face there. Not a ton of product, and we're just gonna go over it in straight line motions. Works pretty quickly. 
Uh, by hand, I've been really impressed with the utility of this product by hand. You know, normally to get this kind of result, you're going to need a tool or a machine, excuse me. But this will scrub, scrub through this oxidation, polish it back to a nice clear surface quite quickly. And I'll keep going. While you're, while you're working, Sam, one of our, uh, our good friends, Tommy, uh, had, he was one, probably one of the first people one on the planet pass. to have plastic all in one. And he, uh, he couldn't help himself. He got out there and started working on his, he carries his micro polisher with him virtually everywhere he goes. He's, <laughs> he's yeah. But he, he did his B pillars and, uh, it was pretty impressive before and after, to say the least. I saw him like he had some like clear drawers that he had like floppy disks in, like I, some real old plastic. <laughs> and <laughs> and one of my best floppy uh, disks. you know uh, <laughs> testimonials is my is my Coors sign that I oh, I, yeah. I bought on eBay uh, for a sum I don't want to tell my wife about. But the <laughs> uh, the clear plastic was so distorted that. You know, I was, I, I was so excited. I, I saved it yeah. uh, for the video, for this product, and it looks absolutely fantastic. The like serene setting behind the clear plastic is perfectly clear. Uh, we also found out that somebody clearly stored it outside because the diorama became so clear, it was clear that a bird had pooped on the side of it. And, uh, we did in there. And, uh, <laughs> track that was out. an so, impressive so transformation. I didn't that notice that before I had polished yeah. the plastic, so saw it then. So here, I'll, I'll just do the tape reveal for you guys there and you can Ooh. see pretty impressive oh, yeah. uh, before and after from the side that we just polished to that center section you know, where you have a, a heavy amount of oxidation there. So again keep in mind this part this is a test headlight so this was done with the restoration kit but the center section still very hazy and then you have that nice clear corner there so you can see the, the lack of light reflection in the middle versus that nice, clear, shiny side section. So, Sam, does that have any protection in it? It does, yeah, yeah. So as I mentioned when I started, you get not only the polishing effect, but you also get um, actually ceramic protection that's in that, in that product. We don't you know, market the ceramic heavily. It's not called ceramic plastic all-in-one. Um, in particular because plastic is so niche and we yeah. need to be clear uh, yeah. for somebody that, hey, this is just for clear plastics and it's, it's pretty, you know, we don't want you going all over the place. Uh, yeah, and saying product. ceramic plastic is kind of confusing. Yeah, so, so. Plastic all-in-one with ceramic protection, uh, but it gives you very durable protection. And that's one of the benefits on a surface like a headlight. I'm not going to have to worry about this going back to an oxidized finish you know, within a month or two. That's going to last me several months, um, if not, you know, upwards of a year in terms of that protection so that it's not, you're not losing all of that valuable work you just did. Of course, on a machine, it's going to be even more capable. Um, you'll mow through oxidation like that much quicker. One of my favorite uses for it is on taillights. You know, a lot of times uh, during a paint correction, taillights don't always get a lot of attention. They're often overlooked or skipped. And getting those polished up and protected can really make a difference you know, on the final look of a vehicle. And it really brings out that deep red and amber that you see in a lot of taillights um, and gets you just a nice pop and finished product. A couple of really important questions because we're getting some very specific materials uh, that we yep. would not want to use this on. Yes. Uh, so exterior trim this black plastic trim no this is not a product uh, no. that you could use on this in fact there's it's textured there's probably very few you know plastics or, or polishes or cures for scuffs uh, on that uh, if that is yeah. painted it yes. is most likely color clear which is a job for some of our other um, correction products yep. this yeah. is specifically for clear plastics which include gauge clusters uh, visors uh, on, on like a helmet, uh, windshield, uh, or windscreens on motorcycles, which we found to be extremely effective. Yeah. Um, but clear plastics primarily, and then the kind of impregnated, pigmented plastic that you'll see on ATVs and, and some of the lawn equipment we mentioned yeah. as well. Really glossy plastic is the key. Yeah. You know, your, your trim, like what you see on this F-150, it is not by any means glossy. It's also textured, so that's going to be an indicator, you know, stay away. You want it to be a glossy surface. Yeah, so plastic all-in-one is more like a polish and a wax in one, so think of it like 
a paint looking surface. So you have glossy plastics as opposed to the trim restorer is just a dressing that goes onto that textured plastic. Yep. And the protection that you get from plastic all in one isn't going to be quite as durable as the ceramic wipes that are in our severe headlight restoration kit, but it does give you quite durable protection. You know, something that you would probably only need to use two, maybe three times a year on a surface like a, a headlight to you know, polish out any oxidation and get it nice and protected. Yeah, Millie Harbinger is asking a lot of very specific questions. Uh, I think she should get the product, but the uses that she's asking for, like make me think that our follow-up email as she is a winner, need to clarify the, the uses for her. Infotainment, that would be an LCD or almost like a gel screen. That would be a terrible use for a product like this. In fact, I would recommend nothing yeah, uh, that we sell for that interior outside detailer. of interior detailer. Typically so uh, Molly, those. it sounds like you got a lot of plastic problems. You're going to be the winner, uh, plastic all in one. And we're going to be sure that you find the right application for this excellent product. And, and please don't take it and go to your infotainment screen or <laughs> a couple other places you have mentioned. We're going to help you out. That's one of the things we do best. That's why we're doing these lives. We're trying to educate you, get the best result possible. Uh, yeah, you're scaring me a little bit, Millie. But yeah, it looks like a couple questions about like Windows as well. I see Aaliyah that asked about using it on Windows. It is not for glass. However, it will work on like clear polycarbonate. Uh, plastic boat windows, like you know, yep. uh, motorcycle uh, windscreens, those are plastic polycarbonate. People throw all sorts of uh, funny words to describe clear plastic. But yes, yeah. we have tested them on all of them. Uh, I will say, too, the one thing I want to be sure is that uh, plastic is, has been made in a variety of ways over many years. And so age of plastic definitely determines, uh, you know, how this product will behave. It has a very nice abrasive package that is not going to be as, as large or as aggressive as some of the products we compared it to, but always test in a conspicuous area first before uh, going you know, full bore, whether that be by hand or machine. There's a lot of gauge yeah. cluster questions. I'll say that you know, the Mark I Rabbit GTI certainly works fantastic. I can attest to that. Yeah. But if it's a Porsche Cayenne late model, you know, late to whatever, early 20s, 2012s or whatever, they're going to have a, a coating over their surface. And if you apply this or any other plastic polish, you're going to you're going to really regret that you did. So yeah, follow your follow your manual uh, yeah. would be a good uh, another good thing to uh, to take a look at. Yeah. So uh, again, we can tell there's a need based upon all the variety of questions. Yeah. But even so, there's there's a lot of nuance within uh, the plastics. So. Um, I think it's, it actually warrants even, even more time to be spent, but yep. we want to move on to the next product. Yeah. And we do have no questions left behind. We'll pull out some examples of some, clear, some other clear plastics. Uh, we had um, you know, the helmet visor, a couple of Well, and things. watch the video. Yeah. We've got yeah. tons of examples in the yeah, video. More depth. Several different sure. surfaces. Yeah. The I video just... is live on the YouTube channel, so you're yep. not far away. You can check it out. Um, and that product is live as well. So Millie, you're our first winner, and we're going to move on to our next product which is our fragrances. And we got Stevie coming on screen to tell everybody who's boss. Surprise appearance. Uh, maybe uh, Stevie Heideman. All right, so we're Stevie running Heideman. a little behind, and we can't really demo these, so I'm going to try and <laughs> yeah. keep it a little quicker. No smell of vision for yeah. you guys yet, as Matt likes to say. <laughs> but um, so these are our odor neutralizing fragrances. These are, these are our Stinky Be Gone air fresheners. You have five different choices between your fragrances. You have a nice cherry scent, a tropical called monkey gas instead of monkey fuel, as seen here. Um, we have JDM squash and uh, fine leather. Just want to make sure I'm going in the right order here. <laughs> and then light them up, which is a more masculine scent. Um, so you have a choice of five different fragrances. These use zinc-based technology. So these differ from a lot of your other air fresheners in that the zinc-based technology will actually adsorb or adhere to odorous molecules. Therefore, removing that uh, odor from the air um, helps control odors. Um, a lot of competitive products will use a sugar molecule, which essentially surrounds and masks those molecules. But then when that sugar molecule breaks down, that scent is reintroduced. So these do a really good job at helping to neutralize odors and helping to replace those with your choice of a pleasant fragrance. And then we also won a nice little award here at SEMA this year. Um, so these are really exciting. Um, they come in eight ounce bottles. If you were at SEMA, you saw the wafers that were included. Um, we decided to cut those 
Um, so that's gonna help uh, keep these at a really appealing price for you guys. Um, and then they come with our little micro trigger sprayer and that does lock, which is really great. You're able to store this even in your glove compartment sideways or your door card, um, wherever, so that you can retreat uh, the needed or the interior of your vehicle. Uh, Nick, I know you've had really great experience. You have kids and a dog, so you had a little bit of a smell going on in your Bronco. And I did, yeah. Cool. Um, I, I think I've been most impressed by the fact that, you know, most, like, fragrances that you buy are just masking, right? So this isn't going to be something you spray on, like, a, a cheese Brussels sprout stain from your buddy <laughs> driving to the Christmas dinner. you got to still clean up that junk. But even so, there'll be some of that Brussels sprout cheese bacon linger if that is <laughs> encompassed in a small little spot targeting it with this I mean it really does neutralize it quite effectively I think that's the the you know biggest benefit that we were awarded for and the difference between common fragrances that we're benchmarking against and ultimately guys if you've bought a product and like the way they smell you know that we can be trusted with fragrances uh, so the smells themselves are excellent some of them are Griot's Garage heritage scents some of them are, you know, just more, let's just say, less juvenile or more well-rounded scents that are... Sophisticated. Yeah, no, okay. Yeah. Sophisticated. I'm going to say less juvenile um, because I was there with some of the juvenile iterations as a teenager. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, it's uh, our first really foray into a full line of fragrances. Obviously, uh, you guys asking for more will lead to more. We understand how to make these and uh, we're excited to get them to market. Yeah. I'm not uh, a big fragrance guy and I, I love all of them. Yeah, they're, great. they're they're one of the things that makes them really special is they're not just a simple um, focused fragrance. They actually contain a wide range of fragrance notes that really create, like I jokingly said, this more of sophisticated uh, fragrance. So, yeah, they're 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 great. So. The nice thing too is these are not overpowering. They're meant so that you can build up to a fragrance level that you like. Um, we did have a lot of questions about the durability of these, and there are a lot of factors that go into that, but depending on how, how much you apply and a lot of those factors, like humidity and uh, the surfaces, the materials in the vehicle, things like that, the odor that you're dealing with, obviously. Um, but these can last weeks, um, and the, the idea is that you never have that overpowering scent that's just obnoxious when you get in the car. You're able to build up to a scent level that you like and then maintain. One thing I'd add to Stevie, uh, the, the trigger is a locking mechanism, so you can lock that trigger and I, you know, I'll keep it in the, in the door pocket. Uh, that way if you, if you want a little extra foo-foo, you just give it a couple shots and you're ready to go. Those are also water-based formulas, so contrary to a lot of the stuff that's out there, they're, they're very safe. Uh, if you, you know, inadvertently got it on some adjacent uh, areas, it's uh, it's not going to be a problem like some of the oil-based, solvent-based uh, fragrances. Yeah, they won't damage cloth, carpet, headliner, yep. surfaces like that. I think that's the question about staining upholstery that we can unequivocally say no. Yeah, I mean, they're yeah. safe. Yeah. We've tested them spraying directly onto seats and headliners. Yeah, Joe, you asked, can you make a, a test sample set? I would say if you own, you know, a variety of Griot's Garage products, you've already sampled the scents. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, so our, our work is already out there in the world, uh, and we are, yeah. are very confident. Uh, I think all but you know, one yeah. are, are, are in our are heritage sense yep. for Griot's Garage. So we're pretty excited about that. And we've added a little bit of you know, new technology to it to differentiate it. And somebody asked, will it get rid of cigarette odor? Uh, you got to stop smoking and get an ozone machine, buddy. Uh, that's, that's not going to be you know, the job for an air freshener, I don't know much well, on yeah. the market they that, they um, help they i mean more than any minimize other but you know yeah. uh, a heavy smoker car uh, it, i think you're, you're gonna have to look towards yeah. plenty of other methods yeah right on. get our odor exterminator that will that will get you off to a good start thank you stevie <laughs> all right well uh, we got one more hard good go or some hard goods to talk about three, right three four five i don't know yeah depends let's, on what you guys want let's get going we got we got right. more Do to come dance here so I think uh, as a product development team, I think it's safe to say that when we develop products, we, we don't just do it uh, haphazardly. Uh, I think we, we all use our products. If it's not during the day, the day job, we're out in the garage. So we, we have an opportunity to use a lot of different competitive products and understand the strengths and weaknesses of all of them. And 
as we've said a million times, take the best that exists and make it better. And one of the things that we did is uh, certainly you guys are, many of you are familiar with the Boss Foam Cannon, the foaming system. Uh, we've developed that system. We're going to continue to build on this and, and, and create a, uh, a very tight uh, system that will really give you the best comfort, performance, control uh, out of any of the products that are out there. Um, this is our new The Boss, uh, what are we calling it, Nick? Uh, we're calling it pressure washer gun. Pressure washer gun. <laughs> uh, so again, shorty. it's he, a shorty gun. Not yeah, a yeah. Gun. So we've been working on this for well over a year, uh, and you, you, we've tested a wide array of different guns that are out there, and they all have uh, strengths and weaknesses. And you know, for if you do an average wash, I mean, you could spend 15, 20 minutes doing, you know, gunning the car and uh, making sure that that's comfortable uh, certainly helps. So that includes just making it fit in your hand like a glove. It also includes uh, adjusting spring rates so that you're not having to, you know, do that old school. You, you maybe you went to your grandma's house and she had that spring, or maybe you still oh, yeah. you well, still I, do that, don't you? Well, I played catcher in high school. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. really inexpensive like hose yeah. nozzle <laughs> that you you literally get like on and no modulation. You yeah. know, where it's just uh, and it just kind of sharply you know dodges yeah. yep. between full on and full off. Yeah. Um, Everybody's experienced a, a low quality spring or, uh, or haphazard spring rate consideration. So. It's a very smooth, smooth uh, band. So a yeah. um, couple things to note. This is, uh, as far as I know, one of the only guns on the market with double shot rubber. Double shot rubber, as we incorporate into all of our polishers, it does help to absorb. Um, it improves grip and absorbs vibration. When you've got that pulsing of the pressure washer, you do get a little bit of a vibration um, that transfers through the, the hose and, and into the gun. So that'll help mitigate some of that. Uh, so comfort wise, it is outstanding. Uh, some of the things that you look under the hood, so to speak, and this is the only gun on the market that has a full top to bottom stainless steel assembly. So there's no brass in this. It is all stainless steel uh, with except to, exception to a very precision machine ceramic ball that is used in the valve here. Um, when you release it, that ball is what seals that, that water flow. Um, stainless steel quick connect, uh, stainless steel swivel, and uh, this, is, this manifold is actually cast stainless steel. So what does that mean for you? Really, this is something that should last a lifetime. Uh, very, very strong, uh, corrosive resistant, uh, manifold that is without a doubt the best in the industry. So, uh, it's marine grade stainless, right? It's it is T three O four, so um, it is going to be highly corrosive resistant. Um, you know, there are with all of these, there are components that uh, over time can can diminish the ceramic ball and uh, various seals. Uh, we we are going to offer a rebuild kit at some point, so. Like any, any good piece of machinery, you've got to maintain it. Uh, but this, again, is going to be very, very durable, outlasting anything else on the market. So uh, you're also going to introduce uh, our new Boss pressure washer nozzles. And a couple things. Again, there's, there's definitely a couple of these out there. But what, what can we do to, to make them better? Well, I don't know about you, but if you, if you have some of the various nozzles on the market, there's no, really no um, indicator as to what the, the spray pattern is um, and or the orifice size. So there's a wide range of orifice sizes that uh, basically allow or reduce water flow. And it's really important to match that to your pressure washer. In fact, I, I killed my yeah, low nice going. PSI nice. and low GPM kind of at home <laughs> washing pressure washer by taxing Sam for some tips that were the wrong orifice size and I, I bled my, uh, my pump dry. This is just a very, very inexpensive one that, yeah. you know, without the labeling, which we were kind of guessing between the, the two tips, yep. this was very early on in this development, it just blew up my electric pressure yeah. washer. I was wow. able to salvage it. Um, I'm a mediocre engineer, uh, but it was clear though that the labeling was was critical yeah. and and or yeah. missing from those. So I don't know, Matt, if you can get a tight close up on this, but this is uh, again T three O four stainless body. The coupler is stainless. Uh, 
the orifice size, if you have, maybe you have a, a gas pressure washer and you have a, a lower performance pressure washer, you may have the 2.5 and the 4.0 um, different nozzle orifices that we offer. It's got a laser etch right here uh, that makes it very easy to discern. And uh, in addition to that, um, the, the industry does use a common color coding system. You've got uh, white is 40 degree, uh, green is 25, and yellow is 15. So you're, you'll find, we'll, we'll certainly have a more in-depth recommendation as to what we recommend various uh, degrees for. Um, you know, if you've got a 67 Chevy that you had painted 20 years ago and paint's starting to blister, I probably wouldn't recommend like a 15 degree and a foot away. It would, it would be, <laughs> yeah. be a bad experience. Yeah. But anyways, well, and we, also just... Uh, Pairing your particular pressure washer with its flow rate or GPM rate uh, with the correct orifice size. We you yeah. know, pride ourselves on uh, good charts and obviously great customer service to get you uh, paired up with the right uh, orifice size uh, for your uh, specific pressure washer. But ultimately, yeah. and you know, we're, we're trained professionals over here and we do things live and you've watched Sam, yeah, like, slice, slice his hand open. You've watched me <laughs> launch a tip into a vehicle. Nobody saw uh, So the rubber uh, protection, in, in particular now, I can get my oldest to rinse with a pressure washer. Yeah, you don't so, have to worry about uh, I am pretty damn excited about a rubber tip on the end of uh, the pressure washer. So I just think it's an excellent, high quality. Uh, we've got some compliments about the thought and engineering that have gone into this, which is... You know, there's some there's some good products on the market. There's some terrible ones. Yeah. Uh, we're we're taking the best that exists and making it better. Yeah. And uh, and we we strive to accomplish that before we bring it to market. So you guys have seen us use those in the lives for a while now, so we can finally officially yeah. announce them. Yeah. And we did have the color red, uh, but I think we all kind of agreed. Oh my gosh, with red, yellow, red, green, red, like we were yeah. we were gonna drive some people nuts. So we we played it safe with with black. And these I, stay black. Yeah. You know, the yeah. red if yeah. you're blowing off dirt and contaminants can get a little dingy quick so yeah i just have to i have to give a shout out to our manufacturing partner like these <laughs> the amount of time and effort that went into these is more than meets the eye um the amount of time and testing to ensure that uh yeah. you know everything was spot on in terms of performance i i can't thank those guys enough so. and the gun I mean, that's yeah been, uh, good the friends they've become good friends we've we've pressed them many times to uh yeah you know, to go further, 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 and uh, they've always come through, including yep. that, that beautiful manifold, which, you know, the answer at first was no, and Jeff, you never took no as an answer, and, uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes that, that takes a little bit more time, but we're pretty stoked about it. I, the other thing I want to say about the shorty, I mean, I, I don't have to, like, really sell you guys anymore because it seems like most of you are pretty damn excited, but if you've ever used some of them on the, on the market, in particular ones that are very inexpensive, these are sharp cheap molds yeah, yeah. right yeah. so you you are like pressing your hand into uh parts of this this the first time i held this model which is essentially our, our pre-production model uh it's come out of the mold for the first time the the smooth joints of this mold and and the shape of this are just absolutely phenomenal and i know i'm selling this but i've used the competitive products for many years uh, and I found that to be one of the most astounding things is the care with which the mold was created to bring those seams together, yeah. which can only be experienced if you've had a worse one than this or, yeah. or, or noted if you've had a worse one. Yeah, a couple, I was say a couple of questions about can the cannon go straight on it? Yeah, so for the sure. Quarter inch quick you connect on, on the end can go right onto the cannon. Oh, Jeff's got one over there. Look at that. Sorry. I boss, to go. gotta go boss, boss combo, full stainless. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yes, it is a standard uh, connector yep. on top. Yep. So, uh, so, yeah, and one last thing, the Griot's Garage logo, some, some guys were like, hey, and, and a gal, they were like, hey, can that, uh, will that be like a trigger lock on a polisher? If I just hit that, and will the, machine, will the gun just stay on? I'm like, yeah, yeah no, that's... Unfortunately not. That's we a, tried that. We'd probably get put in jail, <laughs> straight to jail, like not good. So this is a, this is a safety switch, like a, like a gun that... Uh, the keeps, lockout. Lockout okay. keeps the trigger from being engaged in an unintentionally. 
So, so that if yeah. you don't want your oldest to spray his little brother. My four-year-old I can trust. My two-year-old, no. I need that, <laughs> trigger, yeah, that safety for him. The yeah. only other thing I'll add, just a little sneak peek for you guys. We have a whole array of very highly machined, beautiful, uh, quick connects that, and adapters that are going to allow you to adapt this to virtually almost every high quality pressure washer yeah. on the market. Quick disconnect so, the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> stay tuned. There's more to come. So yeah. that's that. A couple more brief uh, answers. I know a few of you asked, is it a swivel at the base, at the inlet? Yes, it is. And the, the fitting on the bottom does look long. However, that's <laughs> just so that you can insert it into the display that we had here yeah, for SEMA. Um, yeah, disregard that You can see on yeah. the... Can you, on you the, can see this is a, a, a wood display. If you saw us at SEMA, like, what uh, is that? Here's, the the gun It's just office. a stand. Well, you're, you're taking it out. All right, I'm fine. trying to show it off. Me. <laughs> so it was to, you know, Get the proper orientation. Of course, our creative team nailed it. No doubt. Uh, but this is not a piece that will uh, that will follow it into production. Right? Yeah, yeah. This is just for the display model. It's a modified flow inhibitor that improves, <laughs> creates a v vortex of. This yeah, is just meant to right. prevent that. We're, we're going to race this thing on the super speedway, so we need some, you know, throttle reduction. <laughs> Dear Lord. Yeah. All right. So it's Let's a standard reel, three. It's plug. Reel it in, there. guys. Come yeah. on. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, will this be on sale for Black Friday? Unfortunately, no, this will not be available by Black Friday, which again is like blowing my mind that it's a, a, yeah. like a two Fridays from now. Yeah. So, just to keep in mind, uh, we, uh, all of the products that we are showing, some of them are live now, some of them will be live very soon. Almost all of these are going to be coming live right around 2024 as they come in stock. We will be uh, posting that on Instagram and Facebook. And if you sign up for a particular product on this products pa product page at creosgarage.com, you can sign up for an email that notifies you of that specific product's in stock date as soon as it yep. goes live. So if you're looking for something specific, do that. Otherwise, follow us on the other socials uh, and you'll see when they launch as soon as they do. Um, but most of our chemicals are in production or in queue for production in the next couple weeks. So everything's on its way out. Um, and yeah, I mean, we've got, we've got even more to talk about. We are past time. We've got more questions that we can possibly answer before, uh, you know, we start kind of going all the way back to the beginning at the pod. So, uh, I think we're probably going to have to pick a grand prize winner based upon participation. Yeah. Um, so yeah. as we let the kind of time delay cycle through, I think, uh, our two, uh, champions at the back probably have to highlight who was the biggest participant and uh, and poke us a bit because if we don't give away two today we're going to have to give away one on Friday yeah. for the no yeah. questions left behind because I'm that looking be at an, an, an amount of questions that it's now the font is getting so small I, I can't read it and I'm young and don't need glasses so <laughs> uh, we're getting there guys and Maybe you guys have really, sense. really brought it today. Again, I think I've seen some names I haven't ever seen before. Um, we've got more of the technical questions that we definitely have the opportunity to dive into on Friday. For sure. Um, did you want to talk about your, your micro polisher? Uh, May I? Uh, yeah, please, yeah, because I think that's important. While, yeah. uh, while we find this grand prize winner, they're, they're sorting one. through all the participants right now. <clears throat> um, and we're going we're gonna to pick a grand prize winner. So if you're still with us, uh, if you've already won something, your name has been called, uh, social at griotsgarage.com. If you're lying to Stevie, she, you're not going to get anything. She's, she's the gatekeeper back there. Um, I will find out. Well, <laughs> yeah. I, said, I will you find will out. You will be found out. Um, but social at griotsgarage.com will coordinate with you and we'll be sending you the product if you've won something that isn't available yet as soon as it comes into stock. All right, Jeffrey, talk about this beautiful machine. Okay, well, the Boss Micro Polisher, uh, I won't go and belabor it, but uh, we, last year we did introduce a inverter, which you know, we do call it a hybrid uh, for reasons that it's obviously going to run off of a DC 12-volt uh, battery, but also uh, we, you know, for people that want to just run day, all day long, um, nonstop, like yours truly, you need a, an inverter. Um, and uh, this took a little bit of time. It's a very complex uh, piece, but uh, uh, we're, we're getting, it's in production right now. Um, obviously compatible with all of our Quick Connect power cords. So that's seven tools now uh, where you're gonna be able to bounce back and forth. 
Uh, this actually has an integrated cooling fan. It's a very sophisticated uh, system that operates or maintains operating temperature. Um, it also has protection circuitry, so if you bear down on it too far, which is, is obnoxious and not necessary for a micro tool, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to address that as well. So this, again, is just a quick, quick disconnect, just like your 12-volt uh, your battery that it is equipped with. Um, but you, depending on the job, you can, uh, you can pop the hybrid inverter in and you're ready to go. So this is finished goods packaging. No, it is not in stock today, but uh, we'll, we'll address that. Uh, it's coming soon to a store near you. Um, is that like a, or a, a pigeon? Oh, sorry. Train, a train <laughs> going by. All right. So yeah, check out the, check out the website. But um, yeah, hybrid inverter coming soon. So this, this is going to be, um, it's going to allow you to go all day long. One other thing we wanted to do, uh, you know, we purposely integrated a 13 millimeter counterbalance to create a, a micro polisher that offers the most robust paint correction on the market. The drawback to a 13 millimeter is you have that wide throw. If you're trying to do detail work with a one inch or a two inch pad, you're going to find that it obviously it can tend to, to, to slightly bang into adjacent trim and panels. Uh, so what we did is we created a five millimeter uh, counterbalance and I don't know if you can see that. Um, the benefit to this is a very short orbit stroke and it's very precise. Uh, what I typically do is I'll actually cut in around tight, tight nooks and crannies with a one inch rotary and I'll come back and finish it out with this five millimeter and it allows you to ensure that you don't have any dead edges and it's super precise. So this again is coming soon. This will be sold separately, five millimeter orbital drive. Um, and this is compatible with one inch, two inch and three inch plate. So thank you very much. Awesome compliment for even tighter areas, which yeah. I found I actually needed when I was detailing my Grand Wagoneer, a big oh, SUV of all yeah. things. I can't believe that. But all right, we have a grand prize winner Woo! to end the show. And then I think we're going to have to just count how much we gave out oh, and man, just yeah. give out the Holy rest cow. of it. Uh, so I, I don't know if we gave out as much as we wanted, but I think we gave out about as much information, if not more, than we wanted. And we have No Questions Left Behind, which will debut on our YouTube channel this Friday. So if you didn't get your questions answered, tune in on Friday, subscribe to the YouTube channel. But without further ado, our grand prize winner for tonight, which will win everything that we showed in our SEMA launch video, including a boss uh, hybrid micro polisher is Dylan Sawchuk, uh, picked by the arbiters behind the screen who have seen all of the questions come in as Sam, Jeff, and I have tried to show you guys as much uh, as we could. So congratulations, Dylan. Do not miss this one. You better email us yeah. at socialagreesgarage.com because that is a ton of stuff uh, that you just got. It's going to come in some phases, right? <laughs> yeah, you'll get it you know, as it comes out, but yeah, definitely... Don't sleep on that email. <laughs> yeah, so uh, if you guys know who Dylan is and he's your buddy, you better go poke him and let him know he won. <laughs> uh, but congratulations to Dylan, and thank you guys so much for showing up. Uh, once again, these are the, most of the products, if not all the products. We didn't get to hand cleaner or foaming glass cleaner. We'll definitely probably take some time on, on Friday to yeah. uh, show that. Um, yes, Jeff. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but thank you guys for, for coming. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, sign up for our emails. Subscribe. If you want a specific product that we showed off tonight, griotsgarage.com, search the product name, and uh, you can click on a link to sign up for an email to let you know when those products are in stock. Ceramic Trimmer Store, Plastic All-in-One, in stock now. Black Friday and Cyber Monday deals coming up. We hope you all have a happy Thanksgiving. We'll see you again this Friday and answer all your questions. 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time if you want even more info on all these great products. Yeah, so for Jeff, Sam, Stevie, Julie, and Matt, thank you all for watching. Have fun in your garage. Have fun in your garage. <laughs>